Andrea Matterall, and I'm an assistant professor at the Dr. Philip Frost Department of Dermatology and Cutaneous Surgery at the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine. As we all know, we're seeing increasing number of cases of COVID-19 patients here in the United States. And as we've learned from our colleagues in other countries, these patients really are presenting with heterogeneous presentations. Other organ systems other than respiratory are being involved, and we're seeing that there's more and more recognition of skin manifestations in these COVID-19 patients. So today, I wanna to talk to you about some of the findings that have been seen in other countries and here in the US in our COVID-19 patients so that you can be on the lookout for these manifestations. So in thinking about the cutaneous manifestations of COVID-19, I really like to think of it in two main categories. The first are rashes that are related to it being a viral process. So these are rashes that present with a classic exanthematous or viral exanthem, that classic maculopapular eruption. In these patients, these rashes can start at the onset of symptoms, but can also trail behind and sometimes will happen well into a patient's hospitalization. These patients are going to present with widespread pink scaly macules and papules that can be coalescent, meaning clustered together, and can involve the trunk, the extremities, or can be widespread. Some patients have been reported to have itching, while others can be completely asymptomatic. And in other presentations or variations that have been seen are hive-like lesions or urticarial lesions, as well as widespread blisters. The main challenge in diagnosing these patients is that an exanthematous drug reaction is a very, very similar presentation and the main differential diagnosis that we have to consider. In these patients, they will present with the same skin findings of that widespread maculopapular rash, but typically this is going to occur one to two weeks after the introduction of a medication. So an exanthematous drug reaction should only occur after a latency period of one to two weeks if the patient has never previously been exposed to the medication. So just know when you're treating your COVID-19 patients, if they do present with a widespread rash after you've started a new treatment and it's their first time being exposed to that medication, if it's a really short period between medication initiation and the development of the rash, it's likely related to the underlying COVID-19. The second type of rash process that I like to think about in these patients are rashes related to vascular insufficiency, meaning they're not getting enough perfusion to the skin, either because of microthromboses or macrothromboses in the cutaneous vessels. So what are the things we're gonna look for? Well, some of the findings that have been reported include livido reticularis, which are those pink to violaceous or purple net-like patches on the extremities. You can see findings of perniosis, which are dusky or purple macules and patches on the tips of the digits mimicking frostbite. And also acral or distal digital gangrene has been reported, mostly in critically ill patients. The former two of livido reticularis and pernio have been reported in patients though who have mild and moderate disease. And so this is one finding you wanna be on the lookout for in the outpatient setting. As we see more and more of these patients, we'll probably over the next few months start encountering new presentations in the skin. And more importantly, hopefully be able to stratify a patient's risk based on some of these skin findings. But I hope that this was helpful for you for not only knowing what features you can see in these patients, what things to be on the lookout for, and also how to approach differential diagnoses for your COVID-19 patients. Thank you, and I hope everyone stays safe.